I'll never forget it. She sure won't. <gasps> Oh no! Here we go. Of course we're gonna pick Leon. He's been my main video game crush my entire life. Oh my god, I love this cute little art for Ashley in the loading corner. We gotta load all the episodes, I guess. I guess. No wonder the dev Shimmersoft was like, this game nearly killed me. It's a lot of episodes. Reloving the nightmare. Oh, we're not having a good day. <gasps> Her daddy's the president. Phew, exams are done, thank goodness. Gah, can't believe I'm gonna make a C in government. Just hear daddy griping about it. Think of the headlines, Ashley. President's daughter can barely pass college government course. Administration's credibility in doubt. It's not that it was hard, just supremely dull. Political theory is already tedious, and it doesn't help that Dr. Devereaux is a total mandroid. <laughs> Where are all the young, passionate teachers? That's what my generation needs. Dad is always pushing me to find a pet project. Well, I guess I'll have plenty of time to think of a pitch on the way back to DC. For now, better hurry and find my driver before Jenna finishes her exam. She's never more than a few minutes behind me. I'm starting to think it's intentional. I pulled out my phone to call my driver, only to find that the battery had died while I was taking my exam. <gasps> Gasp. Darn. I really need to remember to charge this thing more often. I don't need daddy griping at it at me about that, too. Well, at least John is the predictable sort. He'll probably just be outside my residence hall. I started walking toward my sorority building and quickly spotted my driver's usual car. The person standing next to the car, however, was anything but expected. It's just brandishing his knife. <laughs> Look at that cardboard cut out. Excuse me, sir, but are you looking for me? You're Ashley Graham. Uh, yes. Listen, if this is about my father slashing the veterans' budget, I don't. No, I'm your bodyguard. I've been sent by the president to escort you back home. Oh? Oh, Dad told me that I would be getting a new bodyguard. <laughs> I love that they use the actual, like, voice clips from the actual Resident Evil 4 game. In the flesh. Caught you off guard, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Although, did something change? Dad said I wouldn't meet my new bodyguard until I got back home. Ellipsis. 
more ellipses. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, to the change of plans. We received intel suggesting you might be a target for a kidnapping. Hilarious and ironic. What? Here in the hollowed halls of Harvard? I love the alliteration. Kudos. Good alliteration. We don't know exactly, but they didn't want to take any chances. That's why I'm here. Heh <laughs> heh. What's with the dubious chuckle? Eh, probably just another dude who thinks muscles are a good replacement for tact. Been there, done them. Well, Mr. Bodyguard, do you have a name to go by? It's Klaus. <laughs> I'll just have you know, Shimmersoft, if you ever watch this stream. Klaus is my favorite name for a cat. An orange cat. Klaus, eh? Is that German or Austrian, maybe? You do remind me a little of Arnold Schwarzenegger with, with the muscles and the, um, scowl. Heh, <laughs> when I was in the military, I did a few. A few did call me the Terminator. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I really don't want to know the context. Hey, don't go anywhere. Huh, can't say I would have pinned him as a dedicated recycler. It really doesn't pay to stereotype. Anyway, are you ready to go? Well, I was thinking of grabbing a few things from my dorm room. We'll arrange for it to be brought to you. Don't know who we can trust out here. Oh, come on. It will only take a few minutes. Besides, my roommate... Hey, Ashley, wait up! I looked to my right to see Jenna running towards us much faster than one would think possible in six-inch heels. Klaus, do you know what that sound is? No. It's the sound of betch. I made an A in government, and I'm here to gloat. I can't be here for this. Act like we're in a hurry, Clow. Some of us are. Ash. I waved dismissively to Jenna as I approached the passenger door. Sorry, Jenna, I'm kind of in danger. I'll write you on AIM. AIM. I love the little artworks. Klaus and I leapt inside the car. Hmm. It's a little neater than John usually keeps it, but still smells like his cologne. I guess Klaus doesn't get his own ride. It's the small costs of the war on terror that you don't think about. Gag me, Ashley. Finally. Oh, stop complaining and just go. Consider it done. Klaus started up the car, which kept me from hearing what Jenna was trying to say as she ran up to the door. I hate that I have to indulge her just to keep her from gossiping about me to the press. She doesn't even want to talk to me. She just wants to compare bodyguards and grades. Well, Klaus, you're part of the Grammarly now, so you should roll down the window and tell Jenna how important your mission is. Maybe then she'll go away. Ashley, is this your new bodyguard? Oh my god, what? <laughs> he used a flash grenade. Oh my god, Cloud, did you just blow up Jenna? Nah, just wanted to give her a sense of how important my mission is. Jeez, Clow. Jenna's a snob, not a terrorist. Just trying to have fun. <laughs> Sound clips are the greatest. Relax, princess. Just trying to have fun. Wow. Combat really does dark things to some people's sense of entertainment. You do well to remember that kind of fun tends to end in lawsuits, Klaus. And Dad's swimming in those enough as is. <laughs> Klaus drove away, leaving Jenna to cling to her eyes in fear and confusion. It was one of the few times I felt kinship with Jenna. And then I remembered her making out with Kyle at that party last year. <laughs> hey! Temporal Kitling. Hey, by the way, it rained on my island not too long ago. 
And I want, I saved, if you want them, I saved all my, I had nine blue roses sprout. And I saved them on my beach for you, if you want them. Anyway, to continue. Wouldn't have taken Klaus for the Samba type. I wonder if he's gay. Did I not just say it doesn't pay to stereotype? I'm getting worried that hypocrisy is hard-coded into the gram fram gene pool. You are the president's daughter, Ashley. Still, I wish he'd say something. This music is somehow just making the silence even more awkward. Maybe he'd entertain a few questions. But seriously, what do I say? So how much fun are steroids? Gah, there's gotta be something. I turned the music knob down a little and Klaus, Klaus's eyes darted towards me. Definitely should avoid the steroid question. About your love life. About that scar. I bet Leon gave him that scar. Sweet. I don't know what time that will be. I don't think I have you on my Switch friend list either. Uh, you want to give me your Switch friend code? <laughs> And I'll add you after I'm done streaming. And then... I think we're friends on Twitch, aren't we? For friends on Twitch, you can send me a message on Twitch. Oh! Oh, good. Well, then I can look at it there, I think. Well, let me bring it up. Let me bring it up or I will forget. Because since the pandemic started, my memory is basically big doo-doo. In your about section aha I, I see it switch friend code boom I will add you I'll add you after I'm done <clears throat> now what to ask him about let's ask him about a scar so um how'd you get that scar if you don't mind me asking what scar Oh, uh, uh, nothing. Must have just been the light. Haha. <laughs> Poor man must be sensitive about a sloppy concealer job. I should try to be more thoughtful and encouraging about his explorations. Once I've rallied from this, I'll subtly give him some tips. <sighs> no worry, man. I hope those noises are coming from this game and not from something... Oh something else yeah I was like super busy all week and I had to work and I didn't have any time to stream and I didn't update my twitch schedule and I'm thinking about changing my twitch twitch schedule to just stream like Tuesdays and Thursdays maybe because if I'm if work is picking up more now then I can work Monday Wednesday Friday Friday and stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays so yeah, I get it. Life happens. No problems. <clears throat> uh, let's just ask about himself first. So I can't believe John didn't even say anything to me. I know he didn't like me that well, but he was my bodyguard for the last two years. Did you meet him before you came here? <laughs> yeah, I saw him. Oh yeah, what did he say? Oh, I <laughs> good riddance, Krauser, you big mean evil guy. Hmm. Well, that was unkind, but it does sound like something John would say. Oh well, hopefully we get along better. Krauser killed John. <laughs> he is kidnapping her after all to take her into somewhere in Spain. <laughs> I think we're gonna get along just fine. <laughs> oh, me too. You know, throwing grenades at Jenna notwithstanding. 
I mean, it was kind of funny in hindsight, but it's like Dad is always telling me. We have to anticipate the optics. Hmm. <coughs> <laughs> In my world, the optics are for bureaucrats to worry about. I get stuff done. Right, man of action and all that. But ladies aren't battlefields, Clow. We like a little sensitivity. It's true. Right. You know, it's like that other thing Dad is always saying. The tongue is a gun best left in its holster. Unless you're a boyfriend Dad doesn't know about, of course. Enough chit chat. We're taking a detour. A detour where? C -c 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 Klaus! Klaus swerved onto a dirt road off the highway. At the speed he was going, I felt like my intestines had become a trampoline for my stomach. The path eventually leveled as we came into a clearing, allowing me to complain properly. What's the big deal, Klaus? You're not Mad Max. They wanted you back ASAP, just doing my job. At this rate, he might not have his job for a whole lot longer. All right, we're here. Let's go. Klaus brought the cart to a screeching halt and motioned for me to get out. Where is here, exactly? It's a helipad. We're gonna fly. You okay with that? Good, I'm glad. I find that, uh, pause. I find that uh, I've done visual novels on stream before, and I've had people say that I uh, I go through the text too quickly because I, I guess I read really fast. So I think that if I just read it out loud, <laughs> then I can't go through it too quickly. So that's my reason why I do all the reading. It's a helipad. We're going to fly. You okay with that? Not if you're gonna cop an attitude. <clears throat> this guy is something else. He's being all pissy with me. But it's not like I signed the bill for the veteran's budget cuts. Taking out your aggression on a sweet summer child just isn't right. Looking around, we seem to be at a suspiciously empty and remote helipad. I had a sinking feeling in my gut that something was amiss. Hey, Clow, is this an official U.S. military helipad? I've been to a bunch, but this seems a little underfunded. <laughs> a little too quick for you. <laughs> you catch on slow, as expected. Ha <laughs> ha ha! That's a little uh, little play on words for from the cutscene with Leon when he says, "You catch on quick, as expected." I love these little in-jokes. I am not in the mood for your snark, Klaus. You tell me what's going on right now. Oh, we're talking. <laughs> You're being kidnapped, Ash. The rest isn't for you to worry about. How could you do this to me? Our mutual nicknames mean nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. This is about money. My dad can give you money. Sorry, girly. What I want is access to Lord Sadler, and you're the payment. Lord who? My god, what kind of political scandals that I'm, am I getting wrapped up in this time? Huh, almost let it slip. Enough talk. Time to fly, princess. <laughs> you're mine. <laughs> Whoa. Flash grenade. I have a mouth, but I can't scream. I think that, that sounds like a reference to something. I awoke disoriented. <gasps> Am I dreaming? I feel as heavy as I do when I eat a dozen Krispy Kremes. Not that I've ever done that. Yesterday. Ugh, I remember now. That bastard Klaus knocked me out. Did he tie me up? Why do I feel so cold? Ugh, I just feel so tired. But I gotta push past it. Come on, Ashley, open your eyes. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Ew. Oh my Christ, it's a Cenobite. I don't 
don't know what that is. Cenobite. The Cenobites are extra-dimensional beings who are mutilated and brainwashed into torturing humans for all eternity in the labyrinth. Ah, oh, it's from Hellraiser. All Cenobites were once human, with the exception of Angelique, the daughter of the demon god Leviathan. Okay. That's a good joke now that I have uh, looked it up. Uh, ew! <laughs> oh my god, my my webcam's blocking it, but you gotta see this. Oh, can I go back? What do you say? Ah, our precious friend is awake. Surprising. Wait, no. I think it's just a really ugly wizard. Lol. Not that he couldn't be both. I mean, what was Pinhead but a wizard of pain? But more to the point. Oh god, I don't want to be tortured. Be at peace, Ashley. Look at his look at his, his uh avatar there. This so good.
Okay, back. Uh, I don't know. Because that's how they made him in the original Resident Evil 4. He is a greasy slumlord, basically. Be at peace, Ashley. You are a guest of honor. Guest of honor? In what? North Korea? I hope you don't mind receiving gifts from an older gentleman, Ashley. Gross. It is a once-in-a-lifetime gift, after all. Unmatched in the world. Freedom. Not your Hollywood version of freedom, no. True freedom. From burden, responsibility, indecision. You will never have another worry in your mind. The blissful ignorance of your youth will be everlasting. Oh, my green screen. I moved it. Gotta fix it. There, it's fixed. Okay. What is this guy talking about? He's blathering about freedom, and I'm strapped to what feels like a dentist's chair. The irony might kill me before he does. Wait a second. Is this that Lord Saddleman that Klaus mentioned? Why does he look like he just came from a gothic Ren fair? And slightly more importantly, why does he look like he's lived three lifetimes? Doesn't that sound wonderful? Free from the confusion and filth of this world. Living in endless bliss. Is that not the very essence of heaven? Wow, that's like the exact argument my Sunday school teacher gave to encourage abstinence. Didn't work then, and it won't work now. Hmm. Your resistance is natural. Few people embrace change so readily. But you will see the light soon enough. Great, a real Aunt Lydia type. That'll be easy to reason with. Stay calm, Ashley. Your kidnapping survival course prepared you for this exact scenario. I just need to apply its lessons wisely. First, knowledge is power. Second, courtesy is the password to safety. Third, if you look back, you'll soon be going that way. <laughs> Wait, those might just be fortune cookie sayings. But hey, point made, which is that I need to ask me some questions. Where am I? As tired as I feel, I'm clearly basting in sed sedatives, so a simple question is probably for the best. I just gotta push past the fatigue. Where am I? Where are you? Hmm, I suppose there's no harm in you knowing now. You are in Spain. But don't worry, you won't be here for long. You'll go as quickly and quietly as you came. <laughs> His face is so creepy. Screw you. Grrr. What? There's another person in the room? Yes, Barto. It seems that our precious guest would like your assistance in obtaining our power. Lord Sadler. Barto? <laughs> God alive, it's like diet butterball. Yes, move into my periphery, thanks. At least I won't be visually traumatized. Now, my minion, remember to put the needle in very slowly. We wouldn't want to hurt our new friend after all. Lordy. <laughs> Foo. I felt a prick at the nape of my neck. Followed by something shooting into my bloodstream. Something slimy. I would have felt more revolted had I the energy. <laughs> it's name's Prick. A perfect penetration, Barto. You're really living up to your name. <laughs> Grossly. <laughs> Their names are just changing. Please stop. <laughs> yes, I will feed you after you finish sweeping up the room. Now go. 
could feel my already tenuous consciousness, consciousness beginning to fade again. I struggled to stay awake, but it was in vain. The only comfort was the departure of those hideous men. As the eternal darkness swallowed me, really good game, I uttered a single prayer to whoever could hear. I didn't have a good choice on how quickly that scrolled in. Father, I brought Sarah as you asked. Good. Place him in the dresser and lock it tightly. Will the Lord punish him for what he stole from us, Father? That depends entirely on the good doctor and his cooperation. Whether or not he chooses to atone, we will regain what is ours. He has the antidote. Father Mendez, speak, my child. The American agent, he's been spotted outside the village. Then let us set our plan into motion. Has the president's daughter been secured? Yes, father, she's in the church. <clears throat> Good. We must keep the agent from reaching her. You, return to the village and instruct the others to deter him at all costs. But keep him alive if you can. As a precaution, take this file and leave it in the village. Somewhere where the American agent will likely find it. If you do not capture him first, it should guide him here. Then I will deal with him personally. Yes, father. Under your eye. Luis Serra. He heard everything. Consider your remaining time a gift, Sarah. Hopefully you will not squander this one. I like that. I like that transition cut. Ugh, what is this? Satan's alarm clock? I covered my ears until the ringing stopped. The sound seemed like one of those old church bells they ring at European cathedrals. Apparently that's only romantic from a distance. Let's save. With the sound gone, I took inventory of my surroundings. Looks like some kind of dingy storage room. And considering the drumline competition now playing out in my skull, I assume that I'm in the storage room of a church. I got up and rustled the doorknob for formality's sake, but of course it was locked tight. I am really, really regretting taking construction as an elective instead of locksmithing. Seriously, when am I ever going to drive a bulldozer? I poked around the room for a bit, but it was barren. Nothing but barrels and sacks and hopelessness. So kind of like a Motel 9, but even more urine smell. I slumped back down against one of the barrels and gave the full weight of my attention to my predicament. <clears throat> so I'm in Spain. And probably a poor part of Spain, if the drabby room is anything to go by. Klaus was a trap. An ugly old man saddled me with some thing against my will as part of his New World Order. And I'm famished. Are you there, God? It's me, Ashley. Could really use some help right now. Anything you got. Just deposit it right into my brain. I promise I'll pay you back. <clears throat> oh, oh, my tracking device. Yeah, it was in my scarf. God bless you, John, for hassling me about that every freaking day. What would have been funny is if it had cut back to that cut of john's corpse with the vultures on it just for like two seconds just like rit, rit. <laughs> moving on i hurriedly dove my hands into the fabric of my scarf oh no oh no 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 it's gone god damn it <clears throat> probably shouldn't think that in a church at least that's what I would say if this wasn't the house of the devil. But seriously, who knows where it dropped? 
Klaus could have found it while we were in the helicopter and thrown it out to sea. I'm just... so... it isn't... fair. And with that realization, the dam broke. For several minutes, I cried openly and cursed my terrible fate. My throat became coarse and my gulping sobs quickly took on the tone of a rusted gear. <coughs> what? Ah, blood? Oh god, what's going on? She passed out. Huh? I awoke suddenly, startled by some weird sounds coming from outside. Not quite as hard on my ears, but the jury's out on what they'll mean for my health. My gut reaction was that it was just some more of those cue balls coming to pray for whatever it is they pray for. Their master's love, Rogaine, I don't know. Hmm, the movement is different though. It's like something large creaking back and forth. Weird, some kind of ritual maybe? And by ritual, I obviously mean shunting. It's Leon jumping on the, the chandelier thing. Sweet, merciless God, I'm imagining it now. Oh, it's just the worst thing. It was quiet for a minute. Then I heard the dry screech of a mechanism rising. Steps drew nearer, closing in on my makeshift prison. Oh boy, I can't wait for this Leon introduction. Oh my God. They're coming for me. What did Saddle want me with me again? To make me the orgy queen? I don't know, because I don't listen to ugly old men. But it was probably that. Well, if they think I'm going to be fertilized without a fight, then they're going to learn a hard lesson in being sorely mistaken. Damn. <laughs> I spotted a plank of wood on the ground next to me. Seems appropriate for this unholy space. Let's see how well it fits in some eyeballs. The doorknob gave a creaky sigh as it began to turn, and my heart raced. My eyes darted from the door to the plank. Now or never. It's Leon! Ashley! Well, someone gather some Dragon Balls and call me Yamcha, because I'm about to be dead. <laughs> hey, take it easy. Dare he tell me to take it easy after what happened with Klaus? Ashley Graham is nobody's fool. No, get away! I persisted. I huddled against a barrel in abject fear, hoping to die more like Yamcha and less like Krillin. <laughs> I don't know how Krillin died. It's probably pretty gross, though. Calm down. Everything's going to be just fine. My name's Leon. I'm under the president's order to rescue you. I can't do his voice as good. I wish that I would have told Dad that I loved him more and that Mom is having enough... Wait. What? what? My father? <laughs> Yee! My body surged forward out of sheer relief. I'm saved! It's a Christmas miracle! My heartbeat began to slow a little, giving me a chance to examine my rescuer in full. <laughs> oh, yeah! I love this music and the blowing hair. so much I tried to kill myself. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, baby. <coughs> but dump <laughs> As my eyes feasted on the Adonis in front of me, my vision became inexplicably clouded by bubbles and sparkles. 
My brain also started playing a song I think I heard in the laxative commercial one time. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm okay. Just shouldn't have tried to have a drink. I was just laughing at so how good this is. You know the kind that says, if you just push hard enough, all your dreams will come true and your business will thrive. <clears throat> the point is, I'm saved, baby. And by a super hot dude, hooray! <clears throat> I had a million questions to ask him, but my tongue was dragging on the floor of, in the wake of his sexiness, so I just followed him instead. <coughs> that was amazing. Leon, the professional. <clears throat> <coughs> My lungs. <clears throat> they hurt a little bit. <sighs> as soon as I was up, Leon pulled out what looked like an old walkie-talkie. Wow, I haven't seen one of those in a while. I thought those lines were notoriously easy to jack. Oh, I know. He's using it because no one would suspect a U.S. agent to use such outdated tech. Genius! <clears throat> I like that it's the back of him. <clears throat> I love a man with a big vocabulary. Swoon! He could extricate me anytime. Oh wait, I guess he already is. <clears throat> I wanted to make conversation since I hadn't spoken to anyone who wasn't gross or Klaus for an indeterminate time. <clears throat> but he seemed... Busy? <laughs> Breaking barrels? <laughs> um, what was that number and why did the words Leon's Barrel Blast seem so prominent in my thoughts? Is this coping? Anyway, maybe he's making sure there's no cultist spies hiding in the barrels? <clears throat> sure wouldn't want to be them right now. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> With every barrel decimated, I thought he might at least ask me about my general state of health. But instead he moved briskly toward the door. Is he the coup d'etat type? I hope not. Those are always a bummer in a crisis. Especially emotional ones. We'll just, uh... <clears throat> Kudere. Refers to a character who is often cold, blunt, and cynical. They may seem very emotionless and stoic on the outside, but on the inside they're very caring. At least when it comes to the ones they love. I think he might be. I think he might be. <clears throat> Whoa, the testosterone is palpable. But hey, any dude can open a door for a lady. It takes a real gentleman to open them in a way that reflects how badly she wants to exit said door. <clears throat> we ran down the snaking corridor and approached a ladder. Did someone carry me up this thing? That seems crazy, but par for the course, I guess. <clears throat> Before I could even look over the edge, <clears throat> Leon jumped to the ground below, landing with a confident thud. Now, here's a man who doesn't waste any time. <clears throat> well, when in Spain. <clears throat> Jeez, I know I get a little ditzy around cute guys, but that was unnecessarily impulsive. Kind of like I wasn't even in control of myself. In any case, I should probably get out of his arms so it doesn't seem like I'm enjoying it as much as I am. <clears throat> oh man, how great would it be if there was just a platoon of equally hot Secret Service guys waiting outside the church, ready to escort me out of this nightmare? My reverse harem story begins now. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh-oh. Before we could even reach the door, a familiar voice chimed in behind us. <clears throat> that voice! 
That's the huskiness of an old pervert if I ever heard one. <laughs> Who are you? <clears throat> if you must know, my name is Osmond Sadler, the master of this fine religious community. <clears throat> Did he seriously just refer to himself as Awesome Saddle? He might as well wear a sign on his face that says, Proud to be celibate. Then he'd at least be doing the world two favors. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, it did. What do you want? I knew that I would hate this guy's face in high definition. Like, I feel like I'm becoming an atheist retroactively just by looking at him. <laughs> yeah, his name's awesome now. <laughs> <clears throat> to demonstrate to the whole world our astounding power, of course. No longer will the United States think they can police the world forever. So we kidnapped the president's daughter in order to give her our power and then send her back. No! Suddenly, and regrettably, I was awash in memories of the injection. So that's why they wanted me. In short, I'm the unwilling female ruler in men's dick measuring contest. Tale as old as time. <clears throat> well, in the spirit of saying the quiet part loud, I guess I should add some context. He just planted her a little gift. Oh, there's going to be one hell of a loving father. I thought I might bargain for quite a lot of money to keep this church up and running. His name's Saddles now. <laughs> Admittedly, I was fawning over the protective growl in Leon's voice and didn't really pay a lot of attention to that last part. Something about gifting some plants to my dad in exchange for donations? Joke's on you, pal. My dad hates charities and the environment. Sounds like the president to me. I don't know, actually. I don't know the president right now. <clears throat> if their environmental stance is whatever, I don't know. Faith in money will lead you nowhere, Sadler. That's right, Leon. You stick it to that prosperity gospel. Oh, I believe I forgot to tell you that we gave you the same gift. When I was unconscious. Oh my god, but he looks fine from this angle. Wait, what? Same gift. Leon? Oh, no. We'll bond over this, I promise. Special contributions. My puppets. You'll do as I say. I have total control. Revolutionary. God, this whole evil dude recites evil plan thing is wicked boring. Someone really needs to awaken him from his world of cliches. Maybe Leon should do it. With a bullet. <clears throat> Verbal bullets are not bullets, Leon. Suddenly, we were blocked from the exit by more diet butterballs. <laughs> Maybe Leon's on to something here. Hmm... Not gonna lie, confident smirks of the what now bitch variety are undeniably sexy. Ew! <laughs> Don't! Gross. Too bad it's on a face that has all the dating potential of a garbage bag. Ooh la la, Leon. You thinking what I'm thinking? Drop these fools in a dramatic western shootout? Or we can run away. That's cool too. And maybe even safe. Whoa, that was way too close. Freaking crossbow nerds. Is there any more insufferable enemy type? Leon pulled me to the end of the corridor, but all I could see was a glass window. Maybe he doesn't know what to do after. Ah, before I could even vocalize my surprise, we crashed through the window and quite easily, I might add. It's a weird, subtle display of wealth, importing sugar windows from Hollywood rather than supporting the local glass economy. For all his beef with America, Saddle must like our movies. Would certainly explain why he hired Klaus. I love it. 
It's all very dangerous and stupid, but what cool stuff isn't? I landed about as well as Dad's first TV debate, but to be fair, I wasn't really prepared for Die Hard-esque shenanigans. I read the Supreme Gentleman. Leon jumped to my aid in a flash. Physically, still in one piece. Psychologically, crumbling. Still, I didn't want to lie to him, so I just evaded the question like I do in all my political interviews. Leon, what's gonna happen to us? I knew it was a pointless question, but I felt I was entitled to a little neediness. Besides, guys love that stuff, for so I've read in Cosmo. I like how he says we, as if this weren't 100% my fault, but hey... If he's okay with cutting me all the slack, who am I to disagree? My heart swelled as Leon took hold of my arm, his grasp both tender and protective. It's a truth universally acknowledged that a single woman in so much danger must be in want of a bodyguard. And boy, did I get one. Lucky. I don't want to be buried in a cult cemetery. <laughs> Once we were both up, I huddled close to Leon. Looking around, it seemed like we had landed in some kind of external storage. There was little in the room aside from some bags and barrels, so I didn't imagine we'd loiter for long. Please, please do the barrel joke again. Yes. <laughs> but Leon had other plans. <laughs> Break those barrels, Leon. <laughs> Is this some kind of hobby of his? Maybe Barrels killed his parents, and now he's sworn to destroy all Barrel kind. <laughs> Leon nabbed the Spanish goat. Ooh, I hadn't noticed it before while I was salivating over Leon, but there's some good stuff in these barrels. Ammo, gold, some kind of plant material, you know, resources. Leon grabbed the goods and shoved them in his pockets. I guess that explains his obsessive interest in barrels. But who keeps that stuff in barrels, and in such sparse quantities? Is it some kind of rural geocaching, looking for bullets and pocket change down at the local church? Spain is weird. You know what's also weird? That we're not being shot full of arrows. I looked back at the shadow window of the satellite. The satellites. <laughs> The satellites had more than enough time to follow us. We were only a few feet down and would make for pathetically easy targets, and yet, nada. Does their cult bible prohibit them from exploiting obvious advantages? Are they having a synergy meeting? Are they just sad about their broken splendos? I shrugged my questions aside, knowing there were probably no answers. And if there were, they were probably not worth knowing. Eight barrels. I know, these jokes are the best. I looked back at Leon, who finally seemed satisfied that he had fully raided the church provisions. We hustled over to the door and made our way outside. Right? The developer is called Shimmersoft, and you can join their Discord and give them millions of compliments, should you want to. I th yeah, the Discord is just called Shimmersoft, all one word. Well, I think. I think I found it looking for the Resident Evil 4 Otome website, and they had, like, a link to the Discord. <clears throat> As we ran to the front of the church building, rain whipping omin ominously around us, we encountered what looked like a- what looked to be an angry mob of villagers. They were just groaning at first as they ambled slowly towards the church. Then a few of them started to shout. Un forastero! <laughs> no dejes que se escape! Here's another regret for the pile. Zoning out in high school Spanish. Something about not letting the forest hero escape? I don't know. Foreign languages is hard. We slowly inched our way down the path, presumably to see how they would react. I half hoped they might just be here to fight the man for raising taxes and stealing their chickens. 
but them lunging towards us with death in their eyes squashed that idea pretty fast. Leon coolly stood his ground, gun drawn. I had thought that he could shoot the wagon in front of us and maybe that would, I don't know, distract them or something. Seemed like a long shot. I'll leave it to Leon. You know what? No reason to put myself out there and look like an idiot in front of a hot dude. I've learned that lesson. Leon's the professional here. I just need to let him do his thing. He's gonna knife it. Oh no, did we die? Did I kill us? <laughs> Leon! <laughs> what? Dang. I guess I need to go with what actually happens in the game and not how much Ashley annoyed me. <laughs> And not wanting to do what she did. Leon coolly stood his ground, gun drawn. But personally, I was distracted by the smell of something flammable. Maybe there's explosives in those barrels. I could suggest that to Le that Leon shoot them, but it might be a long shot. All right, Leon, you gotta shoot him. <laughs> well, here's to hoping this isn't the dumbest idea I've had. Without a word, Leon took aim at the barrels. Admittedly, I don't know if he trusted my judgment or just wanted another opportunity to destroy barrels. <laughs> to my great satisfaction, the barrels spontaneously combusted, causing the wagon to roll towards the villagers like some kind of blazing poverty chari chariot. I don't really understand why a church would have explosive barrels on hand. Maybe that was their wine? Is wine flammable? Live hard, drink harder, I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> Barrel count is the best. Oh, I get it. That must have been the communion cart. Filled with the blood of Christ. Which erupts into the flames of perdition? I don't know. Feels like someone is confusing their testaments. Nonetheless, the Spanish flea song is in my head all of a sudden, and I feel genuinely bad about that. With the villagers crushed and or combusted by their own flaming paddy wagon, we took the opportunity to run past. Between the oppressive darkness and the driving rain, I could barely see the path, but Leon seemed to know where he was going, so I just followed closely. A bolt of lightning tore across the sky, and I realized that I was looking at a graveyard. That's not ominous at all, nuh uh. One might say it's sacrilege to kill the faithful in such a hollowed place, but it's even greater sacrilege to think, well, at least you won't have to drag the bodies far. That's dark. <clears throat> Having escaped the crazed villagers, we jogged leisurely down a narrow forest path until it abruptly ended in a ladder. In standard horror movie fashion, going forward meant going down. The ladder took us into a dark cavern, notably devoid of trigger warnings for claustrophobia, or worse, cave crickets. We moved briskly down the tight path and soon found ourselves in front of a rusty door. Leon began to push open the door with the tenderness of a kitten. I'm not sure if I should be charmed by his newfound discretion or alarmed by his sudden caution. What in blue blazes? Ha ha ha. I get it. Because there's blue torches blazing. I was immediately enraptured by the warmth circling the cavern. I felt safe cozy even if only i had a glass bottle i could take some of this feeling with me and maybe melt the ice around leon's demeanor it was perhaps the soothing nature of the flames that kept me from screaming when i saw the figure stationed between them whoa who's the man in black another secret agent or just your run-of-the-mill small town gun nut going through a man cave phase Oh no. <laughs> what is happening? 
Yeah, why am I seeing bubbles and sparkles again? How hard up am I? Whoa, why is my eye moving this way? Is the parasite giving me superpowers? I feel like I could sneak in a lot more gawking if it got awkward. Bandana. I dig the bandana. It says, I don't sacrifice fashion just to obscure my identity. It also looks pretty warm, much unlike myself right now. Let's focus on something else. Glove. Hmm, hands a little dirty, but it adds convincingly to the forest hobo aesthetic he's got going on. <clears throat> skirt? Is that a skirt? I'm not judging. I'm appreciating. <laughs> coat. Where do you even get a coat like this? Suspicious person thrift shop? No. I wish I could have checked him out longer, but honestly, if he's good enough for Bubbles, he's good enough for me. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Leon approached the man casually, so I assumed they were working together in some capacity. The more the merrier, I guess. He's not as clean looking as Leon, but he may be better armed. A girl in peril has to keep her options open. I like the spelling of stranger. Stranger. <laughs> huh? Not the accent I was expecting, but in a good way. Australian, maybe? I'm all about the thunder down under. Did I really just think that? While I questioned my moral credibility, Leon started browsing the man's inventory. What are you buying? <laughs> His name's awesome. Gun shy. <laughs> no, definitely not Australian. <clears throat> Got guns. What are you selling? I heard guns. <laughs> the merchant quipped enthusiastically as Leon stoically pursued his wares. Maybe it's part of Leon's safety protocols to avoid conversation where possible. Merchant. Well, I can't. I can't agree. While the merchant is good, Leon's always gonna be the, the one my favorite, special spot in my heart. Uh, I'll buy Loaded. The merchant man seemed pretty excited about some jewels. Leon showed him. Whoa! Is that a bejeweled bear stein? Beer stein? The. Am I observing the black market in real time? I can't believe they're making Leon break barrels and pilfer valuables just to obtain supplies. That's a good point. Either my rescue is a low-budget affair or our foreign policy is woefully inadequate. Come back anytime. Martillery. <clears throat> Leon finished shopping. I thought I should wave to the merchant man, but I didn't want to mistakenly initiate another romance just yet. <laughs> I wonder what that was for? Testing for water traps, maybe? Still, it seems a little rude to just vandalize the merchant's place of business. Whatever the reason, Leon swept right past the flames like a man on a mission. By which I mean that he hurried over to a box tucked in a nook. <laughs> as if by instinct he drew his knife. Cause what is a box if not a barrel disguised as a rectangle? <laughs> Yes. Ah, crates really do hold aught of use. We ran through the remaining tunnel and climbed some stairs to another ladder leading upward. <clears throat> As I ascended, I heard the telltale sound of wood being victimized. <laughs> Once at the top, I huddled close to Leon again as he approached the door in the next room. Despite all of Leon's caution, the room was pretty barren, save for a bizarrely large typewriter on the table. Or maybe regular sized? I don't know, I wasn't born in the 50s. Maybe someone's writing a novel. I guess I'd better try. I, I guess I'd try to be a writer too if it got me out of Blighttown Better Frame Rate Edition. 
Leon suddenly started typing away with the same dutiful air of a person filing their taxes. Perhaps he has Hemingway aspirations. Would explain the terseness. As it happens, he was simply typing a record of his time and location. He also mentioned professional mode and round two, which could, which I could only assume was spy lingo. <laughs> I guess he's using the typewriter to let someone know his progress. I don't get why everything has to be so convoluted. Don't we have stealth jets? In any case, I hope our little SOS to the world reaches someone. In the meantime, I guess we're moving on. Wow, is Leon really going to ignore that crate? You think you know a guy. <clears throat> he knows which ones are empty and which ones are full. Painting the town red. We found ourselves once again assailed by rain and darkness. All of a sudden, the relative safety of the previous room seemed worlds away. An unnervingly low vibration hung in the air, stirring in me as a feeling of dread. Or maybe it was just the shrieks of bloodthirsty villagers that had me on edge. Do these people not sleep? It's like one in the morning. Or at least, it feels like it's one in the morning. Leon led me into a tower and started climbing up an uncomfortably tall ladder. So wait, he's got the guns and the muscles and I'm the one going up second? Guess there's no sex discrimination around here. Fine, if gentlemen are dead, so are proper ladies. I'm gonna check out his butt the whole way up and that'll show him. <laughs> I mean, it's too dark to really see, but it's not like I deserve to see something so wonderful anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Suddenly, and if we're being honest, expectedly, someone snatched me up and tossed me over their shoulder. <clears throat> I flailed and punched as wildly as an unfit 125 pound woman could, which admittedly wasn't much. Given the situation, I did what any damsel in very great distress would do. Leon! Help! <laughs> hey! It's Leon. Please don't shoot my leg, Leon. Shot that guy right in the butt. <laughs> I scrambled to my feet, eager to put some distance between me and the Pablo on the... Me and Pablo the kidnapper. But when I looked at him, his body remained limp. I realized that it's insensitive to just call a random Spanish, per Spanish man Pablo, but screw Pablo, he was a cultist. He just goes back up the ladder. <laughs> what is it they say about insanity? It's doing the same thing and expecting different results? Sounds about right. I dedicated a little less time to admiring Leon's glutes and began climbing myself. It's really amazing what getting snatched by a cultist will do for one's fear of heights. Phew, what a climb. But not a bad idea to stick to higher ground and force them into a funnel. We should be moderately safe, right? It's not like they can throw stuff this high, right? I scanned the area below for any cultists with pitching aspirations. Just then... Here. Wait here? For what? My expiration date to pass? <laughs> Rather than explain himself, Leon stoically leapt from our perch like he simply didn't believe in gravity or leg fractures. He has got to have government implants in his legs. Got to. Which begs the question, what other parts of his body has the government enhanced? I'm asking for me. I hovered over the edge and squinted my eyes against the darkness, trying to watch for Leon's movements below. I wonder what his plan is, you know? Aside from murder. Murder it is, then. Not an original plan, but solid. Leon rushed past the villager as he wailed in pain. The darkness made it difficult to see what was going on. Oh, what the hell did I just see? Were those worms coming out of his head? C calm down, Ashley. It's going to be... Oh, sweet baby Jesus. It's not going to be okay. My head is going to be worms. And perhaps even worse, Leon's head is going to be worms. I shakily looked up and over the railing. I figured I was already scarred for life, so I might as well stay abreast of current events. The burst of light below drew my eyes rightward in search of Leon. As Fong Q, 
Some more of the villagers stumbled out from the shadows, weapons in hand. Granted, those weapons were more like farm tools, but eh, semantics. Te voy a hacer picadillo. Picadillo? Sounds like an adorable nickname for a nosy armadillo. But it's probably something lame like, You're mincemeat. As if anyone outside of cartoons ever says mincemeat anymore. Amazingly, the cultist was only stunned by the blow. Rural folk are, rural folk are indeed hardy. Oh my god, he's like Chuck Norris if Chuck Norris were worth thinking about. Leon ran back to the base of the tower and called up to me. Follow me. I don't usually like being told what to do, but for Leon, I'll make an exception. I approached the ladder and prepared to climb down, but then it occurred to me. How much longer will I have the luxury of attractive men catching me when I jump? Seems like a waste to just do things normally. Am I crazy? Whew. In hindsight, that was extremely dumb of me. Thank goodness I'm in love with a robot. <laughs> we ran behind the tower, down a dirt road. The whole area kind of reminded me of my grandparents who lived in a rural part of Wisconsin. Just swap torches for porch lights and crazed cultists for trashy druggies. And it's basically the same thing. I mean, they even have bear traps in the street. It's my childhood summers all over again. What's with the knife? Surely he's not going to. My eyes clamped shut in much the same way I feared the trap had closed around Leon's arm. Fiercely. Whew, his delicious biceps are still tethered to his shoulder. Scared me half to death. Still, risking your own arm to conserve a bullet? I shudder to think of how the man budgets groceries. <laughs> we barely moved before Leon put on the brakes and raised his weapon to the darkness. With the rain pelting me in the face, I could just make out the vague, doughy shape of a villager. I wonder if that cultist set the bear trap. Maybe that's how people snag brides around here. Wow. A bullet saved is a bullet used, I guess. I'd say I'm blown away, but I think the other guy has me beat in that department. Sorry, my dude. There seemed to be a large gate at the end of the path. I could feel a surge of adrenaline in my legs as we approached. I didn't know what was on the other side, but anything had to be better than somehow worse Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, that's a lie, because there's lots of things that could be worse, probably. Like, uh... Ew! <laughs> Gross. <laughs> no, bad brain. No one would ever want to ride that sound. <laughs> this isn't... I don't know about this. <laughs> I have to make sure my stream is... <laughs> I better set it to mature content, just in case. I don't know what's coming. <clears throat> Me gusta. <laughs> I like that Leon is very little armpit hair. <laughs> Wait. A collision with Leon's shapely back muscles returned me to reality before I could dwell any longer on that blazing saddle. I could see the gate just ahead, blocked by a lone villager brandishing a torch. Maybe blocked is overselling it a little. He's a blockade in the same way that a traffic cone is a blockade for a twister. Yeah, that worked about as well as I expected. Sorry, my other dude. In the abstract, I felt sorry for the man. What kind of person was he? What were his dreams? <clears throat> With the path clear, the only thing standing between us and the gate was more bear traps. Because if you can't stop people with torches, broken feet and tetanus is apparently the next best thing. Down in the dumps. <laughs> we passed through the wooden gate into what looked like a small ranch. Oh my god, yes. She's gonna be hiding in that dumpster. 
Leon ventured incautiously and surveyed the area. Considering the church group he just demolished, it does seem conspicuously quiet here. Hmm. There's a shed over there. Seems like a decent place to lay low while Leon clears a path. Maybe I'll suggest it. Suddenly, and to my confusion, Leon turned toward a lonely, open dumpster. <laughs> my initial thought was that the mission coordinates had stored more of his supplies in the garbage. I wasn't sure if that constituted an upgrade from boxes. On one hand, metal is sturdier. On the other hand, garbage. Hi. Wait, what? Is this a joke? But then part of me knew it wasn't. My body shivered, shutting off generations of hygienic conditioning. I jumped inside without a second thought. I held my breath as the lid closed above me. As I scooted my body around, I was surprised to realize that the bin was bereft of garbage. Either rural Spain has pretty good sanitation management, or the villages are too busy being crazy to throw their trash away. Or maybe they're eating the garbage. It would address the hunger issue. Regardless, it doesn't change the fact that the only handsome man around had round had just ordered me to sit in a musty waste bin in rural Europe with a parasite roaming around my guts. I don't want to say unwanted pregnancy metaphor, but yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> I shifted uncomfortably in the dumpster. In this awkward crouch, my legs began to sober up from the adrenaline rush, only to discover that a whole lot of pain had moved in. Angered by the needling hurt, I couldn't help but lash out at everything that seemed responsible for my predicament, excluding myself. Stupid saddle, stupid Klaus, stupid Jenna, stupid government class, stupid geopolitical dynamics. I took a deep breath and sighed. I'm getting too wound up. Oh, I know. I should do some of those meditative exercises that my life coach taught me. All right, here goes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. <laughs> yes. Okay, Ashley. You're on a beautiful beach. Sand is soft, sun warmed, nestled between your toes. Your personal bodyguard is lounging nearby, baking his delicious abs to a golden sheen. <laughs> this is amazing. Your personal butler appears in dashing attire, offering a comforting smile. And refreshing pina colada. Extra rum, of course. <laughs> a personal dolphin trainer is putting on an adorable show with your personal dolphin, Flippy. Water spraying all over the training trainer's rippling pecs. <laughs> Everything is so wonderful. You have plenty of money. Nobody has worm heads. It occurred to me then, amidst my fantasies, that Leon might finally be in danger, or worse. Terrified by this prospect, <clears throat> I thought to peek out for a look. But I knew it would be just my luck that some stray cultist would walk by at that moment and see me. Instead, I placed my ear close to the wall of the bin, being careful not to get too close. It's too much to hope Saddle laced his parasite injection with some vaccines. I strained my ear, listening intently to the world outside my garbage sanctuary. I couldn't hear much at all, aside from the occasional thunderclap in the distance. Before the creeping terror of my savior's demise can ensnare my thoughts, the shrill sound of a gunshot burst into my eardrum. A somewhat morbid, but nonetheless comforting symbol of hope and salvation. Well, for me anyway. Assured of Leon's survival, I resumed my effortful listening. I heard a few more gunshots and some muffled screaming that gave the impression of someone falling from a fair height. What kind of ass is Leon kicking out there? A series of thunderclaps prevented me from hearing any more. No sounds took their place as they faded, though all was quiet on the Spanish front. Is Leon okay? Are the cultists gone? Can I get out of this godforsaken dumpster? What was... was, was that a whistle? Is he trying to signal that it's safe? I mean, I've only ever heard that whistle used to beckon someone and buy someone, I mean, a pet. Not wanting to think too hard on the idea, I hastily threw open the lid of the bin and breathed deep. Thank God that's over, by the way. If I smell like rotten meat products, that's just too bad for Leon. 
Speaking of Leon, I scanned the area for him. It's difficult to see, but I found him by the flash of a stray lightning bolt, standing on what seemed like a bridge connected to a farmhouse. In that moment, his dirty blonde locks seemed like the beacon of a lighthouse shining fiercely against the cold black sea, like poetry in the shape of a man. Well, it doesn't seem like he's making any move to jump down and escort me over there. I guess he did kill who knows how many people for my safety, so I'll cut him some slack and do some legwork. <laughs> I hurried over to the farmhouse. On my way, I was surprised by the lack of bodies on the ground. It seemed impossible, but so did a lot of things. Maybe the cultists are just literalists on the whole dust-to-dust -dust concept? As I ran, I became keenly aware of how insane all this was. People dying, and for what? Is it all just for politics? And who stands to gain? One power-hungry old man? Or is this bigger than Saddle? Bigger than all of us? What if this goes all the way to the Illuminati? Amidst my struggles to glimpse the machinations of this mad world, it didn't take long to reach Leon. My head snapped back like a piston when I heard some groans behind me. Are there still villagers out here? Someone refusing to call, refusing the call of dustiness? Maybe I should ask Leon if we're safe and some other things. Does my smell offend? <laughs> Before I could open my mouth to speak to Leon, to speak, Leon spun on his heels. I was a little disappointed, but in hindsight, the creepy sound, sounds behind me were a tad more immediate. Leon leapt down from the bridge. I could see a ladder on the ground already. I'm just going to presume he kicked that down because he likes catching me so much. As I prepared to jump myself, my to, as I prepared to jump myself, Leon raised his gun and looked directly at me. I could feel my cheeks flushing under his intense gaze. Realizing that he could easily see my lacy panties from this angle, I instinctually pulled at my skirt. I didn't really understand what Leon was doing, but the sudden self-consciousness called forth a common refrain in the lives of women. Ow, you pervert. <laughs> a bullet whizzed by me and I realized, mortified, that there was a cultist behind me. But a sequel to Pablo the Kidnapper was nothing compared to the vortex of embarrassment rising up from my stomach. For a moment, I thought it might be better if I just died alongside the cultist. But then he began to collapse on top of me, and I rediscovered the will to live. Oh god, he's starting to dissolve on me. Ew, jump, jump! If Leon's upset about the pervert comment, he's certainly not letting it impact his professionalism. I wish dudes on the train were half so gracious. I inspected my clothes to check that I didn't get too much cultist dust on me. Also, I know I didn't pay attention in chemistry class, but now I'm really, I'm thinking I really didn't pay attention in chemistry class. There was another giant wooden gate in front of us, once again guarded by bear traps. I see the creativity well has run pretty dry in these parts. <laughs> um, okay, so we're playing leapfrog now? Not exactly the back-touching opportunity I was expecting. Oh, wait. He must not think that we can just go through the gate, so he must want me to climb over it. He could have saved us some trouble by just talking like a normal person. I swear, it's like he believes the strong, silent type is an actual personality. I need to think about whether that's stupidly sexy or just stupid. I hurriedly climbed onto his back and let his taxpayer-funded muscles elevate me to the top. If only all America's revenue could be so well spent. I reached for the top edge of the gate and hoisted myself over. Ugh, no one to catch me this time. You can do this, Ashley. One, two, three. I hit the ground pretty hard, no doubt scuffing my boot and tearing a ligament. Still, it could be worse. I could have worn my high heel boots and boy, that'd be the real nightmare. Fortunately, there were lanterns around the door. Although, that left me a bit paranoid about who had lit them and whether they were still prowling about. There was a large plank covering the door, but I easily pushed it up and to the side. I, opened it, Leon. I whispered, trying to avoid undue attention. Leon opened the door and cool as serious as ever. I happily fell behind him as we ran forward. I missed him a lot for only 20 seconds of separation. 
Or maybe I just missed his safety. I don't know. I have about as much clarity as I do upper body strength. Cabin in the woods. And we're back for another riveting installment of European backpacking gone wrong. What dangers await us? Bludgeoning? Impalement? A crushing exchange rate? Let's find out. Uh-oh. After a few seconds of jogging, we came to a rickety bridge. To my surprise, the merchant was waiting beside it. Got a selection of good things on sale, stranger. This is not an official game. This is a fan-made Otome version that has been magnificently written and spliced together from, obviously, clips of them playing the game. It is amazing. <laughs> Wait, didn't we last see this guy in that underground passage? How exactly did he get ahead of us? The logical answer is that the mission coordin coordinators had Leon and the merchant take different paths in order to reduce suspicion. Granted, not sure how much faith I have in logic these days, but it would explain their communication strategy. Yeah. Bizarre as it all was, I appreciated that Daddy was going to such lengths in order to rescue me without creating a controversy. He doesn't have a lot of political capital right now. Surely that's the reason for all this recon work, right? Please, God, let me be right about something good for once. Come back anytime. Leon and the merchant finished their bartering, and we resumed running down the rest of the bridge. We're going to meet Lewis pretty soon. This is going to be good. Leon stopped abruptly in the middle of the bridge, turning his attention to the fancy radio buzzing on his hip. While Leon took in what I assumed was, at best, inconvenient news, I looked back down the bridge to see the merchant still standing there. He seemed so detached, like a statue or Steven Seagal. Huh. Action man Steven Seagal. Actually, Leon reminds me a lot of Steven Seagal, now that I think about it. I want to say it's his eyebrows, but it's probably just the general air of my first language is bullets. I don't know if that makes him a good man or a dangerous man, but when you've been marked for death, the fact that he's hard to kill is enough to give a girl a fire down below. <laughs> I'm going to assume those are all Steven Seagal movies and that this is like one of the most amazing <laughs> frames of writing this whole game. <laughs> it's probably just gonna get better. <laughs> Great. Rather than share his feelings about the general crappiness of that update, Leon immediately resumed running down the bridge. Blasts of lightning illuminated an old cabin at the end of the bridge. My hope was that it was a safe house for the operation. My expectation was closer to a cultist slumber party. Darn it! I said I wanted to be right about something good for once. Good! Maybe we can uh, go back the other way, you know? Group up with the merchant. Buy a rocket launcher? <laughs> wow, it's like everybody in the whole village is here. Hey, wait. What happened to the merchant? Did they swallow him with their organized rage? Did he escape before they absorbed his polygons? Realizing that our peril was a tad more immediate, I looked to Leon in a panic. <laughs> I certainly didn't want to be an Ashley sandwich. Ha 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 ha. It's a good Resident Evil joke because of Jill Sandwich in the first game. So I sprinted as fast as my tired legs could manage. Leon reached the door first and smashed it open, being sure to first scan the room with his gun drawn. His commitment to protocol under pressure is pretty admirable. As the villagers descended upon us, Leon yanked me into the room and slammed the door. I knew we needed to secure the door somehow, but I was at a loss, so I just left it up to him. 
Then from behind us, a voice rang out, energetic and clear. How rude, just hurling planks of wood at unsuspecting people? It's a good thing I... It's a good thing I honed Leon's re reflexes, haha. <laughs> we both swiveled around to see who was behind us. Leon didn't immediately draw his gun, so I figured we were relatively safe as the lone man strutted towards us. Mmm, am I supposed to know this guy? Because I'd like to. <laughs> his picture is his crotch, and his name is I'm Swag. <laughs> Gotta say, English is so much sexier when filtered through Spanish. I really have to watch myself with this one. I bet it's super easy to get on his route. Unconcerned by friend and foe alike, Leon moved to bar the door. All the while, the Metro Cowboy and I began a showdown with only our eyes as weapons. <laughs> yes. Wait! No sparkles? No bubbles? That's weird. Maybe enriched white bread isn't his flavor. I wasn't sure why my bubbles were broken, but my concerns faded away as his eyes openly and salaciously explored my body. He must be searching for just the right compliment to lure me into his Spanish wilds. <laughs> Bad boy. Lewis. Yeah, my lips are supple, aren't they? Wait. What? I'm basically America's princess, and my boobs are the only thing worth mentioning? I guess we know where all the cowboys have gone. To shit. Seriously, I am so pissed right now. Just because I'm an incubator of evil doesn't mean my body is every man's plaything. Yeah, I'm not your babe, Fernando. You want some ballistics? I'll show you some goddamn ballistics. Not the most forceful reproach, but I tried to keep it diplomatic. It's like Daddy always says, never burn a bridge until you see hell on the other side. I demanded, if there's one thing Debate Club has taught me, it's to always hide your disadvantage by turning the conversation away from yourself. Pervert is his name. <laughs> Touche, you inglorious bastard. In true debate team spirit, I must begrudgingly concede the point, but not without a sassy retort. Well, that was, like, not sassy at all. New plan. Lean into the archetype of the spoiled upper crust white woman and turn away angrily. It's always worked for mom. Beyond the power play, my sharp turn hopefully had the collateral effect of letting him know that I hadn't forgiven him his slight. You give men like him an inch, and they'll take your virginity. I would know. As would Kyle. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. She's cool. <laughs> Don't worry, she's cool. I appreciate that Leon's trying to be encouraging. I much less appreciate feeling like I'm some kind of circus freak who's on the verge of growing a worm head. And for the record, I am not over the worm head, and I will not be over the worm head anytime soon. Picture of his butt. Ass to bed. <laughs> Is he talking about the parasite? Newsflash, me amigo. The symptom is freaking wormhead. I'm not sure why El Jerko is so informed about the current situation, but maybe I should ask him a few questions. You condition much? <laughs> Just as I was about to probe the mystery, my gaze turned in horror to the villagers who were descending upon the cabin. Now that I think about it, they have taken a really long time to walk what was seriously like 30 feet. I'd almost think they were zombies. Of 
Following Leon's command, I made my way towards the stairs. Before I ascended entirely, I took a brief glance back at my gun-toting haughty saviors. Good luck, Leon. Me gusta. <laughs> and you too. Hey, wait a second. He forced me to introduce myself and then didn't return the courtesy. Hm. Men. Cabin fever. Once upstairs, I found a burrow. A bureau. Bur burrow? Bureau. Bur what? I found a burrow. Bureau. And huddled inside. <laughs> Adrenaline was coursing through my body. With no to way to expend it, I became nervous and fidgety. In an effort to distract myself, I pressed my ear close to the burrow door and listened carefully. Huh. Deja vu. At least it's not a garbage bin. Will Leon and Don Juan really be able to deal with all those villagers? Guess we'll find out who's got the better plot armor. With the prospect of untimely demise on my mind, I couldn't help but feel guilty for what I had said to El Nino. Sure, likening my breasts to violent weapons was questionable, but I can't appreciate that he was trying to lighten the mood. A little levity is welcome next to Leon's relentless gravita. And to be fair, I was checking him out too. Maybe I should apologize, assuming we survive. Oh shit, I blurted out when the pounding began. I know my etiquette instructor would be mortified by my language, but screw her. She was never attacked by zombie cultists. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. Beautiful. Okay, Ashley, just calm down. Everything's going to be fine. In times of great duress, it's, it's prudent to relax the mind with calming imagery. Just like before. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're in a serene forest, untouched by mankind. Wisps of honeysuckle tickle your nose. A delightful warbling guides down, glides down from the branches and caresses your ears. You're accompanied by your bodyguard, who is <clears throat> well equipped for the journey. The only thing tauter than his bicep is his trusty hunting bow, with which he will stave off your enemies and your hunger. Also, the butt is real. <laughs> Also in your company is a handsome lumberjack who excels at <clears throat> chopping wood. Both his axe and his chest glisten with the dew of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> There's another Zelda joke for you. In your periphery, you spot a weird elf larper fiddling with his <clears throat> master sword. <laughs> You pretend to ignore his lustful gaze while admiring his high cheekbones. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> no, what? Ah! There we go. Suddenly, a forest sprite appears. He leaps quickly between the branches, daring you to catch a glimpse of his tight pants. <laughs> the sensation of joy permeates your being. Your GPA is higher than Jenna's. Nobody has worm heads. Repeat, nobody has worm heads. It is, and it's amazing. Cliche young adult novel that I've been dreaming of since 2004, when Resident Evil 4 came out. Uh-oh, sounds like something crashed downstairs. Did the villagers manage to breach the door or maybe the windows? Listening closely, I could barely make out voices. You know, now that I think about it, we're in someone's house. Are we the intruders? What if this is the cultist community center? Property violations are such a messy legal territory. <laughs> you think? His name? <laughs> Fodder. <laughs> so dead. <laughs> well, I guess you can't intrude when there's no one left to intrude upon. A stream of gunshots sounded from downstairs and moved progressively closer. Oh god, are they coming upstairs? upstairs. Fab, yo. <laughs> Jesus, I've really got to ask Leon for one of his guns. 
I held my breath and covered my ears as more gunshots were fired just outside the, of the bu bureau. Flash grenades? In this tiny space? That can't be good for Leon's beautiful eyes. Did you send those invitations? I told you no more than 50 people. Hmm. A confident quip or a gallows humor? I guess we'll know shortly. The gunshots persisted for another minute, and I half expected to go deaf from all the noise. Who the bad guys? Pretty much. <laughs> yes, there's like... One, two... Three, four, maybe five villagers? Villager types in the game? Two ladies? Two men? Maybe three men. But yeah, pretty much. But then, without any warning, everything went quiet. The gunshots ceased and I could hear footsteps descending the stairs. Propelled by curiosity, I peeked outside the bureau. Some blood stains on the ground, but otherwise it was clear. I'm just so impressed by how the cultists disappeared. So eco-conscious. I jumped out of the bureau and made my way downstairs. Hey guys, thanks for saying something. I really appreciate it. Sexpert. <laughs> Dead hair. <laughs> the bridge is out? What, did they burn it behind them? Also, how does he know that already? Fernando. Yeah, I'll say you forgot something. It's called good manners. So his name's Lewis, huh? Too bad Javier was really growing on me. <laughs> Ashley. I wonder what Lewis's story is. He seems forlorn for the playboy type. I like a man who subverts expectations. We watched Lewis walk away into the night. I glanced at Leon, who seemed rather solemn himself. How does he know this Lewis, anyway? The guy doesn't seem like an agent. Here we go. So much intrigue and drama. I feel like my brain is going to pop. Although that might just be the ringing from all the gunshots. He totally is. Sexy. With everyone but us gone, an unnerving quiet descended upon the cabin. The whole place felt painfully lonely. And Leon meant to keep it that way. I followed behind him, because really, what else was I supposed to do? Still, I couldn't help but look back toward the obviously not our bridge and wonder if I'd ever see Lewis again. <clears throat> Since we had a breather, Leon hustled around the area, grabbing convenient stores of ammo sitting atop crates and logs. Kind of like Christmas as imagined by the NRA. With spoils in tow, we headed toward the back gate where the villagers had flooded in from. Merchant man, you're alive! What? Leon approached the guy like the last 30 minutes. Minutes hadn't even happened. Oh, terribly sorry about that, old chum. I was called away for a bit. You know how it is with bloodthirsty mobs. Now, about those promotions you mentioned. Got some rare things on sale, stranger. No, for real, though. How did he avoid being gorged? Is he in cahoots with the villagers? Saddle using him as a spy? He has he simply monopolized the black market with his infectious laugh and cloaking technology? I don't want to believe any of that, so let's tap the old fall black pan fall black plan. Magic. <clears throat> ooh, ooh, I fear a poor manteau coming on. Stranger, stranger. Now that's a weapon. There it is. Dinya no Dinya? You know, like, Dinya. You know, like, Genie Ninja. It's the perfect foil to an evil wizard like Saddle. Not enough cash, stranger. <gasps> In seriousness, I'm a little overwhelmed by all these men and their mysteries. It's starting to be less Loretta Chase and more Agatha Christie. Wait, don't most people die in Agatha, Agatha Christie novels? Come back. Finally, and now to the shed. 
Oh, we're going in a dumpster again because we're going this way? Oh. There was another one of those typewriters in the room. Without a hitch, Leon began typing away just like before. It's hard to believe that anybody would seriously bother with these things, so I'm just going to imagine that he's leaving the typewriter equivalent of a dick pic. Leon started to pour over the documents, like they mattered. I'm glad he's feeling dutiful enough to read crap, because the only paper I want to see in front of me is a joint. Mmm. Hmm, I wonder if I really focus. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Ooh, let's look at Leon's, all the stuff. Give me this, I need time for this. Look, look. Ooh, witness, time show me what we got, Leon. Hair. His hair is really amazing. Perfectly cut and seamless. Seemingly immune to grease, blood, and other unmentionables. <laughs> well, biceps, shoulders. You know, I hope catching me isn't staining his shoulders too much. <laughs> back. Ah, oh, the desire to touch his back is overwhelming. It's basically finger porn. <laughs> no, I wanted to look at I shouldn't have saved the butt for last. <laughs> oh. Oh god, oh god, Leon's looking right, right at me. Was I staring at him too lustily? And more importantly, does he mind? He looked like he was ready to move on, so I scooted out of his way. Hopefully I just seemed like I was zoning out. Damn it, Leon, what are you thinking? His mind is a complete puzzle to me. I wish he'd throw me a bone. I'm not the master of unlocking over here. <laughs> That's Jill. I followed close behind as we left the shed and glanced at Jinya. Jinja, as we watched by, walked by. Oh, please don't talk to him again, Leon, please. Doing me a small kindness, Leon forged ahead to a small room embedded in the gate that contained a single lever. The lever only moved left or right, presumably corresponding to the two sides of the gate. I assumed we had to make a choice. Well, if anyone cares about my opinion around here, I'd choose... Do I want to go into a dumpster again on the left? Or do I want to fight the giant on the right? We're going to go left. <laughs> Leon picked the right path before I could say anything. I certainly hope it lives up to its name. Didn't matter, I guess. Well, I for one can't wait to turn out. Well, I for one can't wait for it to turn out to be a death trap. Who needs to be safe for more than ten minutes? Not Ashley Graham. That's who. I love the finger gun. Two roads diverged in a wood. The door connected to another outside area that resembled a valley. The steep slopes and network of wooden fixtures gave me the impression of a dam, or at least some kind of funneling structure. That's probably a bad thing. We broke into a run, aiming for the wooden partition in front of us. The area was deathly silent, which I hoped meant we were safe, but given our luck so far, it was probably the exact opposite. Because the universe loves nothing more than malicious irony, a massive thud landed somewhere behind us. I just know I'm going to regret turning around. <laughs> hey, look! The physical embodiment of my regrets! Also, ah! <laughs> what kind of monster? Oh no, oh no, no, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, I know I like alphas when I'm on my period, but come on! <laughs> no, stop, have mercy! <laughs> Gross, dude. <laughs> Forcing myself back to reality, I pushed aside the immediate questions about how such a monstrosity could exist, or, I or why I kind of liked the ripped shorts look. As my mind entered pure survival mode, I employed my other newfound ability, pointing out objects in the environment for Leon to shoot at. Looking upwards, I saw a boulder precariously perched on some wooden planks. It seemed oddly convenient, but I wasn't about to look a gift rock in the, uh, sediment? Bad metaphor. I shouted, pointing at the boulder. It was an extremely vague command, but I figured he'd work it out, what with his passion for body language and busting wood. 
Aw, yeah, I don't know if Leon thought it was super obvious, but I really appreciate the kindness of indulging my marginal contributions. As the boulder came tumbling down on the... Well, whatever the hell it was, we took the opportunity to run toward the gate. Naturally, because this was every bit of death trap, I feared it would be, the door was layered in more chains than the vice president's sex dungeon. <laughs> Which is, like, the worst kept secret in Washington, by the way. With nothing else to do aside from panic, I turned my gaze back toward the monster. Partly to monitor its recovery, but mostly to co mostly because it was just so damn ugly. Thankfully, it seems I can look at it safely from this distance without the parasite hacking my hormones. Now that I look at it, it kind of seems like a crossover between Quasimodo, the Hulk, and a toxic waste dump. Although, that's not a bad idea for a slash fic. I'll store that one away for later. In the meantime, I should give this big boy a name. Labeling your trauma is the first step to a successful recovery. Let's see. His most notable feature, outside of being an abomination, is that he's tall. Like a venti-sized cup of evil. But then, I know better than to overestimate a man's size, so grande it is. <laughs> well, there's no need to get all huffy about it. A grande by any other name would still look as putrid. <laughs> Technically, it's happening in 2004. So, who was the president then? Let's look it up. It was George W. Bush. Okay, so who was vice president? Dick Cheney. It's Dick Cheney's sex dungeon that we're all talking about right now. <laughs> oh, right. I kind of forgot that you're Satan's toe jam and that I'm about to evacuate my bowels in terror. Silly me. Leon! I hurled my gaze like a wet sack at Leon, hoping rather desperately that he had made some kind of progress on the door. You know, with a gun. He's just kicking it. <laughs> and instead, I found him kicking the chains. At first, I thought the sight of the creature had driven him insane, because who seriously thinks they can break padlocks with their feet? But then the chains fell away, and I remembered that insanity is nature's lockpick. Fuggles. <laughs> As the creature began storming towards us, we bolted through the newly opened door. On the other side were some small makeshift houses, which is overselling what were really just dog houses tailored to human height. Subsidized housing, man. Ye Leon grabbed ye old key. Leon ran into the narrow opening that might loosely be called an entrance, swiping a chunky and s a chunky and some ammo from inside. Probably a good idea, considering this building is about 60 seconds away from being demolished. Speaking of which, I wonder how tall, pale, and ugly is faring with that barrier. And we're off! For reasons known only to God and maybe the government, Leon refused to run any faster than a jog. I know girls like a man who seems coolly disinterested, but this is a little extreme. Ah, another gate! Is this how immigrants feel? I'll never support border control again. The creature was mere feet behind us. It was over. I was going to, it was going to trample Leon into a beautiful pulp and keep me as a Barbie doll to nibble on my sweet toes. Channeling his essential badass, Leon spun on his heels to make a final stand against the enroaching death tank. Wow, we're not crushed? Oh, yeah, take that, you cold froth. No one messes with Ashley Graham's bodyguard. Looking at Grande's pitiful gest gestulations, I was somewhat reminded of the fear and desperation I saw in Jenna's face after Klaus flashbanged her. Hmm. Oh, well, it's like my lit professor said. It's not a theme until it happens thrice. As Grande wrestled with the pain of absorbing a magnum bullet through his corneas, I thought we might take this opportunity to bolt, but Leon held firm. It's almost like he expects something else to happen. Something else is definitely going to happen, isn't it? Knowing our luck, he's probably going to transform. 
If that's the case, could he at least have the decency to molt into something attractive? <laughs> ah, backworms! I stared in awe as disgusting spider things sprouted from Grande's back like some blackhead from hell. Uh, what just happened? Why did my eyes go dark? Better to suffer the darkness of sight than the darkness of spirit, don't you think? Um, who are you? I don't remember inviting any other protagonists to my monologue channel. You know who I am. Well, you kind of look like me, except I don't usually look that good unless beer goggles are involved. You've always doubted yourself. Always turned your gaze away from struggles you could not overcome. You need only look within to find the soil from which I sprout. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not following. Your mind was ripping at the seams, dearest Ashley. Bearing witness to such unspeakable horrors, overwhelming your psyche. I'm the taut thread of your innocence. The last bastion of your goodness. So, I'm schizophrenic? Great, as if my dating life weren't already in the hole. What you are is a victim. A victim of a father's singular ambition, of a mother's relentless pragmatism. Are you not, in this very moment, moored to the tide of their carelessness? Are you trying to say that it's my parents' fault that I'm the target of a Spanish cult? I mean, I blame them for plenty of things, but they didn't make me get in Klaus's car. Are the people who slick slickened the stairs not at fault when you tumble down them? Listen, whoever you are, or whatever you are. Lashley. Sure's <laughs> face is sparkling. Pardon? Lashley. That's the name you've given me in your heart. Okay, Lashley? Can we rain check this conversation? Leon's probably doing cool stuff and I need to keep the flame kindled, you know what I'm saying? Very well. Just remember, no relationship lasts longer than the one with yourself. Do not neglect it for an illusion. Okay, okay, geez, you're worse than John. Fortunately, because that whole alter ego business happened on a synaptic level, only about two seconds had passed in the real world. From the relative safety of Leon's back, I turned over a dozen questions in my mind. Does extreme physical duress cause the parasite to expose itself? Does it just need a breath of fresh air away from the fetid smog that is Grande's body? I mean, really, look at that skin. Corpses are not loofahs, pal. Oh, hey, what's that shiny thing up there? Treasure? Focus, Ashley. Oh, right, sorry. Racked with pain and or embarrassment at its lack of hygiene, Grande collapsed to his knees. Leon stood firm and coolly reloaded his gun, as if bored by the whole exchange. Because in his world, toppling a giant merits as much attention as cooking spaghettios. But before I could exercise my right to flee like a coward, Leon did something that I did not expect, nor could mentally understand. He holstered his gun and took out his knife. I had barely formulated the why in my brain before Leon dashed away at full sprint. Needless to say, morbid curiosity kept me stationary. Doing his best pantomime of a crazed rodeo clown, Leon nimbly ascended Grande's back and began an assault on reason, safety, and the whole enterprise of dermatology. I winced as Leon began slashing away at the zit spider with a powerful, deliberate strokes. However, this does give me a great idea for a reality TV show. Dr. Pimple Popper. I'll definitely be making some phone calls. Grande withered in what would have sounded like to pain sounded to me like pain if I hadn't already forsaken the creature in my heart. Exploiting this moment of weakness, as all beautiful men are apt to do, Leon began to serenade the genocide giant with a lullaby. Powerless before Leon's velvety baritone, Grande collapsed into a deep slumber. <laughs> yeah. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Leon just shot him again. At the apex of Grande's flailing, his body went weirdly rigid. I've played enough RPGs to know he's probably gearing up for a desperate final attack. I need to warn Leon. I'll just imagine that he heard me. Grande's body, much like the cultists, began to decay immediately, which seemed cool at first, blush, you know, because who really wants to clean up a thousand pounds of unwashed dad bod? 
but then I thought that his body dust might end up flowing through the dam and into the local water supply. Major ew. American tap water isn't the greatest, but I'll admit, but by Jove, it's not laced with particles of evil. Leon stepped forward as Grande became so much dirt and up. Uh, pillaged the gold bars? Am I seeing this right? <laughs> Leon plundered the booty. I know I shouldn't be surprised by that, but seriously, was Saddle feeding him gold? No wonder the old bastard needs all that cheddar. It's basically minion mix. Leon casually inspected Grande's golden remains and then stuffed them in his pockets. Kind of funky, not gonna lie. Makes me want to bathe in Purell. So wait, Grande dissolved just like the cultists? That's gotta mean Grande was infected with the parasite too, right? And if you kill the parasite, the host dies with it. Okay, now, Ashley, put those anime tears on hold for a sec. No need to jump to conclusions. Maybe Grande was a special case. I mean, was he ever even a man? I'm not necessarily screwed yet. Maybe there's still time to find a cure, and who's to say I'll turn into that? There's supposed to be some obvious symptom before you turn into one of them anyway. Right, a symptom. What kind of symptoms have I had? I coughed up the blood, and there's the bubbles, and... Oh my god, Lashley, are you the symptom? Get out of me, you filth! Breathe, Ashley. I am a symptom, yes, of a world that teeters between chaos and cruelty. I do not speak for your vital organs. Well, okay, I guess you would know. Just give me a heads up if you feel any, you know, corrupting influence. I surely will. I looked back as we ran onward, fearful that Grande would rise from the dead. Because at this point, why not? But there was nothing save for the careless whisper of the wind. I coveted that wind, I suppose. Now he uses his gun. Son of a bitch, Leon. Men have no right to say women are myster mysterious when they've got guys like this on their team. Not that that impairs my attraction, if anything. <laughs> Just ahead of us was a door, exactly like the one we entered. Leon was as unhurried as ever, but given what we just survived, I was glad for the breather. Grande, maybe in the next life you can be worthy of your ripped shorts. In the meantime... Rotten hell! Such darkness lurks in your heart. Leave! There's a lot going on in this game. Gondolados. I inwardly sighed as the gate shut behind us, relieved to put that damn up. Damn in the hopefully forever past. Against the backdrop of our recent ordeal, the relative peacefulness of this new area was quite striking. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh wait. In the tapered whispering of the evening wind, I found some meager respite. Yeah, that sounds good. Leon pushed ahead, seemingly unfazed by tranquility and terror alike. Such endurance. I'm starting to believe the man is a literal Adonis, and that's fine by me. We ascended a hill and came to an area that seemed like a cliffside. To the left, there was a precarious stone bridge leading to an imposing door. The exit, very likely, of the other path I thought we should have taken. Hey, wait. That's Ginger up there. How stupid he must think we are strutting into Grande's doomed funeral while he just strolled down Easy Street. Maybe if somebody had just followed my advice. Situated between the paths was a large gate adorned by a mask with one glowing red eye. Leon inspected the emblem briefly and then moved away toward a trail sloping off to the left. I guess puzzles don't interest you as much when you yourself are a puzzle. At the top of the stairs, we stepped onto a gondola loading platform embedded in the mountainside. Love that the patchwork sheet metal aesthetic they've got going really reminds you of crippling poverty. The gondola cars moved up and down the line, so innocently committed to their eclec electric destiny. It reminded me a lot of the American rest Rust Belt, charming as an idea in a third world sort of way. Fortunately, us coastal elites are much too savvy to ever get on such an obvious death trap. Oh my god, wait for me, Leon! Okay, so we're on a rickety old gondola car suspended who knows how many feet over the Spanish abyss. But it's cool, we're cool. It's not like anyone else would be riding this thing at this time of night, right? 
What does your heart tell you, Ashley? Not nearly as much as that rifle. I wish I could see what was going on. Close your eyes if you want to truly see. You must forego sight. I'm hip to that. Aside from Leon, sight hasn't done me a whole lot of good so far. Shh, let us focus. Mm. <laughs> Behold. Aw, oh, yeah. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Yum! Wait a second. I was talking about what Leon was shooting at. The eyes nourish the mind. Would you really prefer poison to wine? Well, I... No, it's just... I don't like your trister, trickster ways, Lashley. Very well. Back to the reality you so crave. Oh, looks like I missed round one. I mean, Leon's probably got it under control, so... Hey, Lashley. Say no more. <laughs> oh yeah if this is my innocent side call me a saint mm. <laughs> his eyes are closed Ashley open your eyes seriously you're the one who put these images in my mind don't even What, what happened? Am I alive? Well, more alive than that guy. I'll give Leon credit. He knows the right way to avenge a woman's honor. Which is swiftly. Still, it's kind of horrible watching people fall into the nothingness. What's at the bottom, I wonder? It's probably trees, but I hope it's a whole bunch of, gran of grandes ready to eat the fuckers. Ooh, language. Now on stable ground, I took inventory of my pain. Hmm, yeah, seems like a pretty good amount. I'm lucky that my face is free of hatchets, sure, but gratitude is a poor substitute for Tylenol. Leon turned toward me with some kind of canister in hand. Are we going to graffiti their gondola? Because I'm feeling exactly that spiteful. Whoa, whoa, why is he aiming that at me? <coughs> what is this, pesticides to keep the bugs from eating my battered flesh? Weird. It smells like plants. Like pot plants. Not that I would know anything about pot or have any experience with pot panics. Huh. All of a sudden there's a tingling feeling in my head. But I can feel the throb starting to get far away. And I feel <laughs> like chuckling. Oh my god, this is pot! <laughs> wow, I'm feeling like really good. Like so good that I almost forgive that axe-hurling madman. I mean, he was just doing what his heart told him to do. Would I really be any different? Would any of us? We moseyed over to a long staircase leading downward and proceeded not surprisingly in that direction. We continued along the path at the bottom and soon came upon who else? Ginger! Welcome. Maybe it's just because I'm coming off a high, but something seems a little off about old Ginger, don't, don't it? There's just like an aura could also be his glowing red eyes. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, I ain't gonna knock a dude for popping a J or three when this is your job. That's just self-care. He unwrapped up pretty quickly with Jinja, but I guess we did already see him like 30 minutes ago. We resumed our jog down the path and soon ran into another door, not unlike the ones in the village. Naturally, we proceeded without any concern for our safety. Who cut the big cheese? <laughs> Would you take a look at that? It's a forest! Oh hey, that reminds me of playing that song, Dark Black Forest, on DDR. It's a long way to go, honey, he said. I know, but I'm afraid. Where are we going? She asked. Into the dark black forest. Soon the narrow path fanned out into a dead ending featuring a solitary- into a dead end. Featuring a solitary, ramshackle, warehouse-type place. 
I bet ten Spanish dollars that they keep the cultist Kool-Aid there. That's why we've come, right? To find the antidote to the evil within? As we approached the door of the building, I swallowed hard, trying to fight back the enroaching sense of loneliness and dread radiating hardcore from this place. Still, I tried to seem brave, if only for Leon's sake. Well, that's a load off. Time to cower. There wasn't exactly a ton of hiding spots, and I thought it unwise to back myself into a corner, so I nestled myself between a nearby tree and some weird log shed. From my excessively dingy cover, I watched Leon carefully open the door and become one with the darkness. I wonder what Leon's going in there for. Maybe to meet another secret agent? But that doesn't explain why I'd have to hide. Oh, unless he thinks they might double cross him. Hmm, drama. At the same time, it seems pretty dangerous to just leave me out here in the open, in the middle of a forest, in the dead of night. Oh crap, I just remembered I am vulnerable and terrified. Man, I never thought I would miss the dumpster. Garbage sanctuary! What's hap- What is happening? Oh my god, the building is on fire. I mean, wow, I didn't know backstabbings happened that quick outside of General Hospital. I didn't really want to leave my hiding place, but I was also afraid of what, a of what attention a flaming warehouse might draw among the saddle-bound. Bereft of good ideas, I moved to the other side of the shed and desperately wished I could curl in into a morph ball and just roll out of here. Metroid reference! Instead, I squatted intensely and watched nervously for any sign of Leon. Each passing second burned away a little more of the rope of my hope. My hope rope, you might say. For a moment, I was petrified by the thought that Leon had been murdered. Part of me really wishes I had Lashley's soothing mental imagery right now, but considering why she's in remission, I should probably stay vigilant. Listening more closely, I could hear a noise coming from the warehouse. It sounded like bullets and shrieking? Rather unholy medley. But if it signals a struggle, then that means Leon's alive. Give him hell, Leon. Because otherwise I'll be leaving your ass behind. Another few minutes passed and eventually the sounds dissipated. I took a chance and ran up to the building, trying to hear better while avoiding first degree burns. I heard something collapse, but it wasn't from the inside. I peeked over the corner to, of the side of the building. I half expected to see Ginja standing there. Actually, did Ginja know about this? Did he tip off the secret agent? Is he the secret agent? Did he teleport into the building? Is it the coat? Is that the source of his power? So many questions. As if to undercut my mounting anxiety, Leon tumbled through the hole in the siding and rolled coolly to his feet. Oh my gosh, Leon is safe. I'm safe. Woo! Take that, Jinja, you potential traitor slash love interest. I ran up to Leon, who looked a little scuffed and bruised. A good look on a man, I might add. Shows character. Maybe I should inquire further about the preceding incidents, you know, so that he knows I'm thinking about him. Did Jinja go rogue? Okay, well, maybe I'll ask later. Probably for the best, considering that the building is smoking more than the, than the 50s. The egg, the bass, bass, and other things. I know, they're really good. We made our way back to the gondola station, but before boarding, Leon turned his gaze to the towering silhouette looming over the darkness. Is that a castle? It's huge. So huge that I'm not sure how I missed it before. Right. Anyway, it'd be nice if someone there could help us, like a prince. A rich, handsome, filthy, fucking rich prince. Oh, oh, what if Lewis is actually a prince, like he became disenchanted by wealth and decided to commit his life to the people after he realized they'd been denied the luxuries he had so long taken for granted? Like light bulbs? It sounds a little hokey when I think about it, but I'm sure Lashley would say something like, better to indulge an innocent myth than a cruel truth. Rest in peace's weird side of me. Leon sure looks nice. Wisps of fog only accentuate his excellent jawline. And his arms, so smooth and defined. It's not often you find a guy who can balance muscle and metro. I wonder what else he keeps shaved. 
dirty thoughts. Huh, sure is quiet without the threat of assault. Might not get many opportunities like this to chat with Leon. Maybe he'll answer a question or two. Hey, Leon. So what's the story behind you becoming my bodyguard, if you don't mind me asking? Hmm, that's a little tough to explain. If you're worried about whether I can handle it, Leon, then don't. I'm tougher than I look. You're right. I shouldn't treat you like a kid. You've been through more in a day than most people endure in a lifetime. You remember the former president shooting off those missiles at Raccoon City? How could I not? My dad was the Veep. And it was all anybody talked about at my high school. Granted, most of that was just President Evil jokes. Ah, President Evil. Did your dad tell you anything about what caused the incident? No, he won't talk about it in private, but I've heard stuff from his cabinet. Something about a company called Umbrella, making viruses into bioweapons, and then it leaked into the city? <laughs> almost sounds quaint when you say it. Huh, are you making fun of me, Leon? No, it's just... I was there when it all happened. The death, the destruction, the smell. The news didn't cover half of it, and people wouldn't believe it if they had. It really was hell on earth. What kind of things are we talking about? Resident Evil 2 Remake! Oh, Punisher. Coming right for a hole. That's scary. It's too horrible to describe. Let's leave it at that. Yeah, probably for the best, but what were you doing there in the city? Did you get stuck in the quarantine? Actually, I just graduated from the police academy and requested an assignment to the Raccoon City Police Department. It was supposed to be my first day on the force. Because I was young and stupid, I drove into town to see if I could help. Kind of hard to say it was bad luck when I put myself in that situation. Aw, Leon. I sympathize with stupidity driving off to places you don't belong. Sounds to me like you should get an award for worst first day ever. I guess my superiors thought so, too. That's how I skipped a few rungs on the career ladder and wound up in the President's service. Of course, there are other reasons the government wants me close to the vest, but I'm afraid that's classified, even for the President's daughter. Hmm. Just you wait, Leon. I'll get my security clearance and learn all your secrets. Your call, sweetheart. Just don't be disappointed if you find more skeletons than secrets in my closet. Hmm. Oh my god, he called me sweetheart squee! <laughs> so, Umbrella is gone, right? On paper, yeah. In reality, I don't know. A company like that knows how to survive in the shadows. Do you think Umbrella has something to do with this village and everyone acting crazy? Heh, <laughs> you're putting the pieces together pretty fast. Your dad said you were smart. Oh. Well, smart enough to never tell anyone how I got into this mess. Part of me wants to say no. It's not possible. And I do still believe Sadler is running the show here, but... Umbrella did have satellite operations in Europe, and then there was... That woman. Woman? What woman? A woman in a red dress. I don't guess you've seen anybody like that. Red dress? No, I haven't seen anybody like that. Good thing, too, because it sounds like competition. Although, wait a second. When I was crying in the church, I thought I heard someone rattling the doorknob. But they never came in. I wonder. Well, don't worry about it. It's all just speculation at this point. And besides, our first priority is getting you out safely. Right. He's not telling me everything, but maybe that's for the best. I'm confused enough as is without layering on shadowy corporate subplot. The gondola came to a halt, and with it, my fantasy of continued conversation. Onward, I guess. We jogged down the small hill and walked up to the large wooden door that Leon had inspected earlier. Leon began sifting through his pockets. Huh, I wonder if he, like, swiped a key from a secret agent or... Sweet, merciful Jesus. First off, ew. Secondly, maybe I should have asked what. Asked about what went down in that warehouse. Thirdly, scratch number two, I made the right choice by not asking. Still, in the spirit of the times, I'd like to say that this whole thing has become really unpleasant to my eyes. 
With the door unlocked, Leon tossed the eyeball to the ground like a used candy wrapper. Was that really the best idea? What if we need that again? People who install retina scanning doors are probably paranoid enough to do it more than once, you know. Not in this universe, sweetheart. <laughs> Running from the bulls. We step through the gate and... Okay, now, hold on a second, me. Can we just stop and ponder the fact that a total hottie just opened a door with the person's eyeball? That is so nuts. I mean, these people don't even have toilets, and they're building doors with retina scanners? I know I live in a gated community, so glass houses and all that, but this wealth gap is borderline American. Whew, okay, I'm good now. I just had to clear the air. Continue, me. Why, thank you, me. I'd be happy to. Where was I? Oh, right. On the other side of the gate was a very tight path leading up. The path was enclosed by rocky embankments that were totally climbable, but Leon seemed fine with walking the old straight and narrow. It's not like we're trying to escape an area bristling with hostility or anything. What's that rumbling sound? <laughs> I looked behind me briefly, half sure that Grande would make a grand re-entrance into the world of the living. Holy Grande Latte, I knew I'd jinx it. Death be damned, he'll feast on my lovely lady bones yet. <laughs> I spun my head forward and was relieved to, one, finally uncocked and ready, and like any good man should be, and two, that Grande had apparently been reincarnated as a mere truck. A truck that is up uh, driving straight towards us on a narrow path. Yeah, that embankment is looking pretty scalable right now. It's not about bolting, but Leon held firm. If I run now, it might distract him and he might also think I'm a complete coward. I didn't want him to think I don't trust him. Men love a girl with undying certainty and their manly ability to succeed amidst unreasonable odds. Don't they? That certainly feels true. Trust Leon completely. As if buoyed by my conviction, Leon stepped back and raised his weapon to the night. Granted, I'm still petrified by the prospect that he's just going to stand his ground against a two-ton vehicle, but hey, more cowering can only enhance my feminine charm. <laughs> now that is how you propose to someone. Meanwhile, 20 feet away. Oh, <laughs> So I began to plan our wedding. We slipped past the flaming truck and continued up the path. Wait, there's villagers behind us. How did they... Oh my god, Leon, you flippant dolt. You gave them the key. With the villagers doing their best impression of a stampede, Lee and I looked honestly at one another. His eyes said, I've got a plan. My eyes said, this is your fault. Because where else are we supposed to go? As the villagers drew uncomfortably near, I temporarily forgave Leon for his earlier poor judgment and looked to him for guidance. He flicked his eyes at a crank to my left. Such plans, much thought. I love all the memes. Ugh, look at the rust on this thing. And I thought I'd gone too long without a loving touch. Focus, Ashley. Cultists. Cultists with torches. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Leon's the best. I took hold of the handle and looked at Leon for a signal. I knew it was just going to be more quiet body language, but I imagined a seductive wink-blown-kiss combo? Anything to keep the spark alive. Wow, actual words? I'm so motivated. Let's push this crank, noodle arms. Push it real good! Wow, we did it! Does this qualify us for relationship upgrade? I mean, it's not quite dodging ancient traps in unison yet, but I think there's real potential. I don't have a lot of confidence about what we'll find in this castle, but given everything so far, I think Ghost of Vincent Price is a reasonable gamble. Chapter 2 traps will tear us apart 
Not Salazar. He's a butt. Alright, we gotta load all the episodes. 